Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and if you're a regular view of my channel, then you probably recognize this. It's a 256 gigabyte Sabrent Rocket M.2 SSD. I've used in many of the budget PC builds I've done on the channel because, well, it performs great and it's very affordable, which makes it a great choice for a small budget PC. Well, 256 gigabytes is a good size for a boot drive, but what if you need more? Well, it just so happens that Sabrent just sent over their one terabyte Rocket Q NVMe PCIe M.2 SSD. What's the Q mean and how does this $120 SSD perform? We're gonna be looking into that today, but first I need to get it out of the box because my first concern is something may have came loose in there. One more thing to point out before unboxing this is that all Sabrin SSDs come with a copy of a Cronus True Image software, which is actually a software package I use often to make regular backup images of my primary drive. Also, Sabrin drives are really geared towards people upgrading from maybe a hard drive, so providing a good way to clone an old drive to a new one is a bonus. But okay, let's see what's in here. It's a nice little metal holding case it comes in. And I think sliding around was just the instruction manual. And there it is. Well, that's it. Now let's go over what we're going to do with this today. First, I'll briefly explain how SSDs work in general, how they store data, then I'll explain what the Q means or how this SSD specifically stores data and how it differs from other drives like this one. Next, I'll run some benchmarks on the drive and see how it performs and how it compares to some other drives, specifically this Intel 660P, a similar drive I've recommended in the past. Finally, I'll wrap everything up and let you know if I think this is a good drive and a good value. Let's start with how SSDs work. And to do that, you need to understand that no matter what data you're storing, whether it's the operating system the computer uses, that spreadsheet you're working on, or that game you just downloaded from Steam, your computer breaks that data down into bits or ones and zeros. These bits are then stored in memory cells on your SSD. The memory cell functions like this. Basically, you have some particles or electrons just chilling down here in the substrate level. To write data, the cell is then flashed with some voltage, hence the name flash memory. Anyway, this voltage or program charge excites the electrons and they rise up to a higher state of being. It's like nirvana. Actually, it's a floating gate. Now to read the data, a different voltage is applied, a read level charge. If there are electrons in the gate, they'll transfer the current from the control gate to the source electrode in the substrate, which translates into a zero. If there aren't any electrons in the gate, the current can't flow, which translates as a one. To erase the cell, another erase charge is applied, which moves the electrons back to the substrate level. Now that was an example of the simplest type of memory cell a single level cell which can hold one bit of data, either a zero or a one. And while all memory cells operate in basically the same way, the difference is the number of bits they can hold. So we moved from single level cells or SLC memory to multi-level cells or MLC memory, which holds two bits per cell, to triple level cells, TLC memory, three bits per cell, and now QLC, quad level memory, which holds, you guessed it, four bits per cell. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind about these types of memory cells. First is degradation. As the cell is flashed with voltage during the continuous program and erase or PE cycles, the cell starts to deteriorate and the electrons either escape or just 
fail to leave or return to the substrate. Eventually, the cell degrades to a point where it can't store data anymore. This happens faster as you increase the number of bits stored. Now, the average PE cycle lifespan of each type of cell varies depending on, well, really depending on the source you cite, but on average, the data I've seen indicates that SLCs have a lifespan of about 100,000 PE cycles and QLC's lifespan is about 1,000 PE cycles or less. The next factor is speed. An SLC is pretty basic. One charge to move the electrons, only two charge states to read, zero or one, on or off, one charge to erase. That can be done pretty fast. As you move up to the QLC, now the program charge has to basically arrange the electrons into one of 16 different charge states, and then it needs to read that charge state to determine if it's a 0110, 1100, 0101, or any of the 16 possible combinations. This takes a bit longer to do. So now I just told you that QLC memory is slower and degrades faster. So why bother, right? Well, it comes down to price and capacity. QLC holds four times as much data in the same space. A one terabyte SLC drive would need at least 8 trillion cells, while a 1 terabyte QLC drive can do it with 2 trillion cells. That 75% decrease translates to higher capacity and cheaper drives. The Rocket Q comes in capacities all the way up to 8 terabytes. That one I wouldn't consider cheap, but it won't be long before an 8 terabyte M.2 SSD is just the norm. I mean, I remember when I got my first 8 gigabyte hard drive and my mind was blown. As far as speed, that's where cache comes in. No, not this cache, this cache. We'll talk about that when we get to testing, but first let's go over how and what we'll be testing this one terabyte Rocket Q M.2 SSD on. And if you haven't guessed it by now, the Q stands for QLC, as opposed to this Rocket drive, which is a TLC drive. First, the system I'll be testing on is my main workstation consisting of a Threadripper 2990WX, 64 gigabytes of memory on an ASUS Zenith Extreme Alpha motherboard. This system has huge PCIe lane support and bandwidth, so it should give the most accurate benchmark results. Additionally, I'll be comparing the Sabre drive to the Intel 660P, another similarly priced QLC SSD. Finally, I'll be using the system boot drive the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, which is a TLC drive and still one, if not the fastest Gen 3 SSDs available to transfer the vials to and from. Okay, that's it. But before I roll the benchmark results, let's take a look at the specs of the drives. The one terabyte Sabrent Rocket Q NVMe PCIe SSD is a PCIe Gen 3 by four drive and has a max sequential read speed of 3,200 megabytes per second and a max sequential write speed of 2,000 megabytes per second. There's 256 megabytes of onboard DRAM cache and up to 250 gigabytes of SLC cache. It has a read-write power consumption of 5 watts and 4.5 watts respectively and has integrated smart and trim commands for error reporting and mitigation. And it comes with a 5-year or 260 terabytes written warranty. The one terabyte Intel 660P series NVMe SSD is a PCIe Gen 3 by four drive and has a max sequential read and write speeds of up to 1800 megabytes per second. There is also a 256 megabytes of onboard DRAM cache and up to 140 gigabytes of SLC cache. It has an operational power consumption of 0.1 watts and integrated smart commands for error reporting. It comes with a five year, 200 terabytes written warranty. Okay, now the SSDs are installed in the system and I'm ready to start running some tests, but first I need to explain the different types of cache in these drives. First is the DRAM cache. This is actually a 256 megabyte DRAM module that is physically on the drive. The same DRAM that is installed in the PC except I think these still use DDR3, I'm not positive in any case, this is really fast and can handle all the little read write tasks that go on just as the system operates, checking page files, writing and appending logs, all those little background processes that need to access the drive. It also handles the first 256 megabytes of data written to a disk. That's why sometimes you'll see when you first initiate a file transfer, it starts really fast and then seems to drop off a cliff. 
The next type of cache is SLC cache. This is the drive actually using the QLC cells in SLC mode, so just storing one bit of data. So you get much faster speeds to the extent of the cache capacity. In the case of the Sabrent drive, that's 25% of the available space. So at the moment, our blank drive has a 250 gigabyte SLC cache. That'll be reduced as the drive fills up. But initially, you would need to write more than 250 gigabytes to the drive before the speed fell off which is a test I'll be running. Okay, let's start the testing and you see I have both drives installed in the system. The Sabrin is assigned as the G and the Intel is assigned as drive J. Both drives are blank and formatted in Windows default NTSF. Let's start the testing with the standard Crystal Disk Mark benchmark. The Intel is on the left, Sabrin on the right, and we'll just fast forward to the end and we see that the Sabrent did deliver slightly faster than advertised read and write speeds, while the Intel drive did post higher than advertised read speeds, its write speed was slightly lower than the spec 1800 megabytes per second. And just for sanity check to ensure we're not bottlenecking our results with our source drive, I ran the same test on the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. And while the read speed of the Samsung drive is as expected faster than both the destination write speeds, what surprised me was the Samsung drive was slower than its max advertised read and write speeds, which means it only edged out the significantly cheaper Sabrent's read speeds by 10 megabytes per second. Now, to be completely fair, the Samsung drive is the boot drive that's running the OS, so results can be skewed. But let's see how these numbers compare in real world scenarios. Let's start by testing our cache speeds of the Sabrent drive. And on the source drive, I have a folder set up with 255 gigabytes of various folders and files. The first thing we'll test is the DRAM cache. So let's copy this folder that contains 254 megabytes of JPEG photos. And that wasn't an editing trick. That was real time and basically an instantaneous transfer and all the files are copied. DRAM cache works as advertised. So delete that and the next test will be the SLC cache. And for that, I have another folder with some video files of various sizes, which is almost seven gigabytes total. So let's copy that. That took 6.2 seconds with a transfer rate of between 1 and 1.38 gigabytes per second. Now, let's do the same thing on the Intel 660p. And again, the Intel DRAM cache resulted in an instantaneous transfer. Now the video files. And that was about 0.64 seconds faster than the Sabrent drive with slightly more consistent transfer speeds. But now let's really test the SLC cache and drive write speeds and transfer the whole 255 gigabyte folder. So we have the Sabrent drive on the left this time and the Intel on the right, and let's speed this up. And you can see that the Sabrent drive does peak at higher speeds, while the Intel drive maintains a more consistent speed until we reach this point where we come to a section where the drives are copying a lot of small files. And as is typical with any storage media, this slows the process down because for each and every file copied, first the file needs to be open, read, and then closed on the source drive, then open, written, and then closed on the destination drive. This opening and closing takes time and that adds up to slow the process down. And now right at about the 114 gigabytes written, the Intel drive has appeared to run out of SLC cache and speeds fall to the actual QLC write speeds of right around 100 megabytes per second, give or take. Okay, let's speed this back up. And here, finally, the Sabrent drive finally reaches the end of its SLC cache, which it may have actually surpassed the 250 gigabyte point by a little. And the whole transfer takes it about seven minutes and 13 seconds. But still a long way to go with the Intel drive. And 
and almost yes finally done at 25 minutes now to double check the advertised slc cache size of the 25 percent available space with the drive already 25 percent full i copied another 255 gigabytes to it and this time the slc cache did run out at about the 191 gigabytes written point and qlc speeds were sustained between 110 to 120 megabytes per second this time finishing the copy in about 14 minutes and 22 seconds so the majority of the files i transferred were in fact part of my game library so for the next real world test i want to test game loading times so i loaded shadow of the tomb raider set identical display and graphics settings and recorded the time it took from the point i clicked run benchmark until the benchmark started. Again, the Sabrin is on the left and Intel on the right. And it looks like the Sabrin drive loaded about 2.4 seconds faster, which translates into about 9.5% faster load times. Okay, another test I ran was a read speed test, but really more of a curiosity thing. So I copied that 255 gigabyte folder back from the Sabrent drive to the Samsung. And to my surprise, it completed in seven minutes and eight seconds, which is only like three seconds faster than the Sabrent drive. That's like margin of error difference. And finally, I simulated about a year's worth of normal use on the drive and used a script to continue this right delete and rewrite almost four terabytes of data to the drive. And this resulted in exactly zero degradation to the memory cells. For a comparison, my second Intel 660P is actually permanently installed in my main rig as my editing scratch drive. So I'm continually writing and deleting large amounts of video files to it. And after about eight months of continuous use, it has over 4.5 terabytes written and is still at 100% health. The smart feature keeps track of any potential problems with this drive. And in the event that memory cells do fail, the trim function cordons off those cells so they won't be used anymore and eliminates the risk of data loss. Also, speaking of margin of error, each of these tests weren't just one-offs. I ran each one at least six times, three times with the drives on each side of the Dim.2 riser, and I highlighted the mean results. And I'm just gonna let the results that we just saw speak for themselves. And they're telling me that the Sabrent Rocket Q, despite being a QLC drive, is fast. Almost as fast as the fastest Gen 3 NVMe drive available. And at only $119, that makes it a great value. So if you're looking for an affordable NVMe storage solution, this is one to check out. And you can check it out from the link in the description below. And when you're at it, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button because that should be the UPS guy with the next package for the channel. So I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.